Edinburgh Business School for Edinburgh Napier University. And I'm delighted to welcome today for our session Russell Dalgleish, Chair of the Scottish Business Network. Russell is a, a serial entrepreneur and investor, a strategist and innovator, who will give his tips for um, making meaningful connections today. But before I do that, let me give you a little bit of bio about Russell. He's enjoyed a highly international career in the techno technology sector and now focuses his efforts on supporting owners and boards of companies to devise and implement growth strategies to create shareholder value. In his earlier career, Russell held board leadership positions with international companies, and his areas of focus include leadership, innovation, entrepreneurship, and strategic thinking. Our speaker at events uh, uh, from Los Angeles to Abu Dhabi, and now very often from his own living room, Russell's founding managing partner of the advisory group Exalta Capital Partners and the founding chairman, as I said, of the Scottish Business Network, which is an independent international membership organisation for Scottish entrepreneurs and business leaders. It now boasts more than 8,000 members, a testament to Russell's networking uh, in action. Russell enlisted the 100 most influential British entrepreneurs and he's a member of the uh, advisory board for the business school here, the Maserati list of business leaders who support the next generation of entrepreneurs, and a board member of the Institute of Directors, Scotland IS, and the Merchant Company of Edinburgh. So without further ado, if I can just mention to everybody that today's session will be recorded, and as Russell is delivering his presentation, please feel free to uh, put questions into the chat and we'll pose those to Russell uh, at the end of his presentation. So Russell, if I can uh, now ask you to share with us your uh, thoughts on making meaningful connections. Excellent, thank you very much. So I'm a serial networker. Sorry, the screen's gone a bit funny, let me just get this. Right, okay, so I can I, I can see. Um, hi. So I've discovered that I'm a serial networker. I've never really considered myself to be anything other than a businessman. But over the years, it's become more and more apparent that I have a ability to create networks that lead to connections that lead to opportunities. And that's how I now spend my life. And I have to say, it's been incredibly thrilling. And I wish I'd started earlier. So to have the opportunity today to speak to you at Edinburgh Napier University is just spectacularly good for me. So I graduated from Edinburgh Napier um, in 1986 with a degree in IT. I was not a particularly good developer, but um, at the time I wasn't bad. I, I, one of the great things about Edinburgh Napier for me was the aspect of my course was a sandwich course. So I did four years at university, but the third year was actually spent in industry. And I was the first technology sandwich student that Bank of Scotland ever hired. And the bank came in very late into the process to select a young person to bring in as a young programmer, a young developer. And when they came to our class, there was only two people left. So there was myself and the other chap. Now the bank chose me because the other chap had long hair that almost touched the ground. So that was their requirement was the fact that they thought I would fit in. And that took my career into technology. And I was in technology for probably the first 15 years of my life, slowly moving through software into physical technology and electronics, going from working in Scotland to working internationally, initially in support and then into marketing and then into sales. And then so far this century or this 20 years of my career has been spent leading businesses and supporting business leaders, initially in turnarounds and now in growth. And through all of that, what I've learned is that the people you know are the people that are going to help you. 
And if someone doesn't know you, they're not going to be able to help you. And this is the term that we call a network. I tend to prefer to think about it as a community. So there's a community around about me of individuals who can help me. Now, if we look back in our society a couple of hundred years, we lived in small villages. And I was brought up in one of those small villages in the Scottish borders, possibly a town now, so the town of Selkirk. My family has been in that town for just over 400 years from the first recorded mention of the name Dalgleish. So that town was my community. You know, everybody kent you. So you couldn't do anything wrong, but the people to support you were the people within that town. I then came up to Edinburgh to go to university, and my network expanded for the community of people I worked with. So there were people who came to Edinburgh to study on my course, or who played basketball, and I got to know them. And then I went into work in a company at Bank of Scotland, and I met new people. So all the time, I was getting to know these new individuals. But what would happen would be, I would know them for a period of time, weeks, months, years, and then we would fall out of contact again. Because there was no real way to remain in contact with people. There was the usual Christmas of sending out hundreds of Christmas cards. But I don't really think that ever made a connection for us as human beings. But what's happened this century is that the technologies have came along which have allowed us to connect. We have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, we have these tools that allow us to maintain relationships with people at a much deeper level for a much longer period of time than was ever possible before. It's not just about the fact that you may not see the people all the time, but you really get to know people. You know, you'll know on Facebook when someone has a baby, they'll do a picture of the baby and a new member of the family joins them or someone's son or daughter gets married. You know, you'll see these things and you start to get a really deep understanding of people. And that's the kind of social network element of our society today. But my interest is in the business community. So I've used networking techniques and communities in order to further my own business interests and those of the business interests of friends. So I'll give, give you an example. So I use LinkedIn as a way to keep in contact with people. During lockdown in April, I started to reach out to 20 people a day who were first connections on LinkedIn. So you can imagine my network's built up over the years. And I chose 20 people each day who I hadn't interacted with for at least a year. And I wrote to those individuals and just said, how are you? How's your life treating you? What's happening in your business? Is there anything I can do to help? So that was me using my network in its truest sense. These are people on the very outer edges of my network because I haven't spoken to them for a year. But they, most of them responded to me because though we hadn't spoken, they had interacted with me because I'm quite profligate in posting on LinkedIn posting articles and interesting things that, are, that I notice that I think will happen other business people. So they were aware of me and felt they were remaining in contact with me. So when I reached out to them, many responded. And I'll give you an example of how networking works. So one of the people that responded was a chap called Kane Ramsey, who's a world-leading trainer. So Kane and I got into a conversation about what was happening in his business, and I started a project to help him. And then Kane said to me, why don't we do a course together, Russell? Now, I've never considered doing a training course. So he convinced me, and we sat down together, and we've created an 18-hour training course, which is currently live on Udemy, that people can download and access. Now, that opportunity came about solely because of what I would call networking. Keeping in contact with people on the outer edges of my community and building those relationships through continually broadcasting material, which they are digesting and in some ways helping them. And that to me is the real power of a network. Anyone watching this who's currently an undergraduate or a recent graduate, I have to tell you, your network is vitally important and you cannot start building that network too early. With products like LinkedIn available, you can build that network at just about no cost. But 
If you're using LinkedIn to contact me, or you wish to add me to your network, you have to understand how I'm going to perceive you. So if you think about the way LinkedIn works, if you were to send me a connection request, I will look at your LinkedIn profile. And what I see at your LinkedIn profile will affect whether or not I connect with you. So if you were active in the areas where I am interested, then I would naturally probably accept your connection request. Uh, by the way, if 24 hours later you try to sell me something, I'll then switch off the connection request. They don't do that. But making sure your LinkedIn profile is as professional and effective as possible is really important. So get the picture there, get the landscape picture. Make sure you're posting regularly about things that interest you. Now, the posting on LinkedIn is very important. It's got nothing to do with search engine optimization. What LinkedIn is about is about you telling me what you're good at, telling me what you're interested in. And then when the opportunity comes to connect, I'll see if you're interested in the same types of things as me. So if you're interested in entrepreneurial growth or you're interested in supporting Scottish companies, then I'm naturally going to think you should be part of my community and accept that, 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 that introduction to connect. So it's really important when you're looking at something like LinkedIn, not to make it for you, but to think about this as a way to present you to the outside world. So on LinkedIn, you have the opportunity to write like a bio, a short introduction to who you are. So don't put your CV in there. Honestly write down who you are and what drives you. So if you look at my LinkedIn, and please drop me a connection request. If you look at my LinkedIn, You'll see in that section on my LinkedIn, it says that my passion or my why, as Simon Sinek puts it, my why is to help others in business. That's what drives me. I look for opportunities to assist. So it's very clear as to what Russell does. Russell is trying to help. It's very clear by looking at the articles that I post, what types of areas of interest Russell has. And you can look at the, the different types of roles I hold, so you can see how I implement those interests. So really do that for me. Make sure that your LinkedIn works for an external person looking at it and not just for yourself. A great way to do this is to get a couple of friends to do a critique of your LinkedIn. So they look at your LinkedIn and they go, that picture doesn't really work, or that's not really who you are, or these words don't work, and then make the changes. LinkedIn, we're doing this talk here in November 2020. Over the last six months, LinkedIn has become possibly the most important business tool out there. For 20 years, email was my most important piece of technology, and today it's LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn allows me to work with a community that's not only geographically dispersed, but it's individuals at different levels, at different stages in their career. It's a great way to share what I'm passionate about, and it's a great way to identify people that I can help. So think about how people are perceiving you on LinkedIn. The other thing I would say about, about LinkedIn is be really clear why you're using it. So if you have no reason to use it, you can have an account, and you can just watch and read what else is happening. If you're trying to make something happen, then it's when to start using LinkedIn more actively. So about five years ago, myself and my co-founder, Christine Essen, created an organization called Scottish Business Network. We started with two of us sitting in a coffee shop in London, and we decided it would be great fun to pull together Scottish people in business in the city of London where I was working. And since then, we've built developed and driven the growth of what is now the UK's largest diaspora organization. A diaspora organization is built around a country. So our country is Scotland. And what we do is we look for people who are Scottish or worked in Scotland or people like yourselves who study in Scotland or what we call affinity Scots, people around the world who are passionate about Scotland. And we bring them all together. And we've now done this to such an extent that we have a community 
of what is now over 10,000 people around the world who feel part of this community. These individuals have some link with Scotland. And the way we did this was primarily to use a tool such as LinkedIn to market what we were doing. So we would regularly post articles about what was happening in Scotland, Scottish innovation, Scottish success, Scottish culture, Scottish charities, Scottish universities. And very quickly, we started to take a dominant position as that voice for Scotland on these subjects, reaching out to the external world. We then amplified that message through partnerships, partnerships with the university, but also partnerships with Scottish organisations around the world. So organisations like Scott Week in Los Angeles or a Tartan Day Committee in New York. And these organisations can then amplify that message. And we can identify how to help them. But it's all about them being part of our community, part of our network. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do I find the time to make use of, to do this networking? Well, I have to be honest, I've never had so much time as now, because in 2019, I would spend an awful lot of my world, a lot of my life, travelling the world, visiting different countries, working in different cities. Today, I spend most of my time in a couple of locations at home. So this has given me the opportunity to start reaching out to more people. But how do you do that? How do you reach out to someone you don't know? Because the way many of us have been brought up is to think that reaching out to someone we don't know is rude or it's annoying or they're not going to enjoy that experience. We use phrases like cold calling or spamming people. And it's nothing like that. If you were to send me a message, say through LinkedIn and say, Russell, I'd like to chat with you about something, provided it's logical and professional, I'm quite probably going to respond positively. So, for example, if you wrote to me and said, Russell, I'm a, I'm a young entrepreneur driving a Scottish business, and we're looking, for, we're looking to try to exploit opportunities we've found in South America, can you help? I'm in there. I'm, that's exactly the kind of thing I like doing. So, I want you to reach out to me. And do you know what? If you don't reach out to me, I bet you I won't be able to help. So, it's important to reach out. And then once you reach out and we help to work out exactly what kind of support you need, we can then use this bigger network to identify the individuals in whichever part of the world you want to go to who might be able to help. We as an organisation, the Scottish Business Network, have mapped Scots holding senior positions in some of the 200 largest companies on the planet. And these are individuals who because we have a relationship with them, we'll be delighted to help you, provided they feel they have ability to help you with your ask. And this is the key to networking. The key to networking is about being specific with how you feel the other person can help you. So, for example, someone will come to me and say, we're running an HR consultancy and we're looking to reach managing directors of SMEs. And I'll say, I can't really help you because your ask isn't specific, specific enough for me to do something. Because your ask is vague and looking to meet managing directors of SMEs, I'm kind of a bit worried who it is you actually want to speak to. So when networking, you should have a specific ask, absolutely laser focused, as my colleague Christy will say, a laser focused ask on what you want. I'll give you an example of this. We held a um, Scottish Business Network event a few weeks ago, and someone had a very specific ask. They wanted to meet the head of data at the British Library. So the person at the British Library was responsible for the data assets. So that's a really specific ask. There were 50 of us on the call. So you would imagine it's a fairly unlikely situation that someone on that call is going to know the person that runs the data science unit at the British Library. But someone put their hand up and they said, I might be able to help. 
my cousin's on the board of the British Library, you could ask him. And you can see how these sparks and how this interconnectedness of a network works, provided it's lit with a specific task. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to be absolutely clear what you're asking. Now, if you're a recent graduate or an undergraduate, and you're looking to secure that critical first role, you can do all the usual things. You can send out CVs, you can apply for jobs, you can look at job boards. But maybe what you need to do is to come up with what is the job you want? What is it specifically you enjoy doing at university that you'd like to take forward as a career? How do you get to there? And that's where you've got the specific ask to help. And what I would suggest you do is, if you're looking for a particular job, identify the companies that do that, and then write to the managing directors of those companies. Write them a note, and I'll give you a hint on how to work the note. So imagine I'm running a company that you'd like to work for. So imagine what my day's like. You know, it's it's hectic, it's chaos, it's making decisions all the time. If you're managing director of a company, people tend to bring you all the problems. That's what my life's like in this, in this um, scenario. So if you were to write to me and go, hello, Russell, I'm a recent graduate. I'd like a job, please. I would take your application and I would send it to my HR department, because that's what I do. That's how to shuffle it. However, if you were to write to me and go, Hi, Russell. I heard you give a recent talk, and I was inspired to drop you this note. I'm a recent graduate as well from Edinburgh and Napier University, though more recently than you. I'm now trying to decide how to take my career forward, and I wonder, would you give me five minutes on the phone to share some of your experience? I would take the call. And you'd be surprised that the majority of managing directors around the world will take that call. Because it's a specific ask. You've approached me professionally. You've said something good about me. Why wouldn't I react positively to that? Your ask is really easy for me to say yes to. Would I give you five minutes on the telephone? Not would I meet you for a coffee for an hour, that big commitment, but just five minutes on the telephone. And on that five minutes, when you get the call, you repeat the ask. Russell, I'm a recent graduate from Edinburgh and Napier. I'm trying to take forward my career in this way. How do you suggest I progress? And do you know what I'll do? I will feel committed to make introductions for you. So I will try to think of people I can introduce you to, which will help you. And that, again, is To summarize, Build your network, nurture that network. Use products or platforms such as LinkedIn for maintaining that network. Be polite, be professional, don't go annoying anyone. And when the time is right, make sure you have a crystal clear ask and reach out with that ask to the people you think that can help. No matter how senior these individuals are, don't don't make the decision on our behalf whether or not we would like to help you. Just ask and see what happens. And that's what I've done with Scottish Business Network, with my colleagues and with the community. And at the present moment, we are holding meetings, looking at the, uh, the trade talks in Washington, meeting with the, um, uh, the Scottish chap who's driving the largest fintech in Australia. We're looking at how we can influence policy as well as help Scottish companies achieve opportunities around the world. And that all happens because we've built and nurtured this network of people with a common goal. So please, my ask to you is build that network and use that network. So that was my 25 minutes of advice. So we're now going to do some questions. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Russell. Uh, we've had uh, some reaction already with um, one of our fourth year business management students uh, taking inspiration from what you were saying and, and uh, aiming to brush up her LinkedIn um, profile and expand our network. And I was wondering, you, you, I've heard you talk previously as well uh, on your use of LinkedIn uh, and 
the way that you refer to it is your daily newspaper. And um, mm -hmm. if you could maybe expand on how people could find some content and, and use it in that way to, to start making these connections and, and demonstrate that focus. Well, I'll say two things here. One, so I've, I've tried to take the question from a different angle today because I've got a, um, a one hour presentation I did specifically on LinkedIn and I'll drop that in with this um, presentation. So when you share it, people can get that as well. Um, there's, there's two pieces of content I'll share. One is an hour on, on how I use LinkedIn with some hints and tips. And the other is an interview with a, a, a Scott in uh, Chicago, Andy. And he's just the world's leading expert on LinkedIn, and his insight's incredible. So from the LinkedIn perspective, between those two, you'll get lots of things to action. But you're quite correct. So the way I, I look at LinkedIn is I think about this is my newspaper. So I'm the owner of a, a newspaper. So every day, as with any newspaper, we're going to have a headline story. So that headline story is the post I make every day. I don't write the posts in great detail. What I do is I find a piece of content or a thought that I feel will help other people, and that's the lead story in my newspaper that day. So if I look at this week, my lead stories have been about the US election, and they've been about what should I wear on a Zoom call, you know, that sounds really silly. You know, what should I wear on a Zoom call? How's that a business point, a business question? The response was incredible. The response was incredible because an awful lot of people in business are wondering, what should I wear on a Zoom call? And it got great interaction going. So I think about that daily post that I put out on LinkedIn is my headline. So it grabs attention as a headline by being a punchy headline. And it's quite difficult writing punchy headlines, but you try. And also having a good image to go with it. So a good picture which goes with that. It could be an image you've taken yourself or an image that comes with the article, or you use a royalty-free website such as Unsplash to capture that. But if you think about it, what we're actually doing is that that's me publishing my story for the day. And as with any newspaper, there's the headline story, and then there are other articles. And the other articles are the ones that I like or share during the day. So it might be the fact that Edinburgh and Napier University are putting on a, a, an interesting event in a couple of days' time. So I'll like and share that. So it becomes, uh, it becomes like a newspaper, but also like a newspaper, it's got to be coherent. So if I was to do a post tomorrow about how to bake a cake, then it would, it would, it would clash. You would think that doesn't make sense. Or if I was to start talking about my views on religion or my views on politics, that wouldn't make sense. Because as with any newspaper, my newspaper's got a voice. It's got a particular way that arguments are articulated. And the voice I chose for my, my newspaper, my LinkedIn, is it took a lot of work because I wanted a voice that matched in with my passion for entrepreneurship and passion for Scotland. So I've ended up with this incredibly polite voice. This voice says, thank you to everyone for their comment. This voice um, helps to boost anyone else who's looking for help. And I've discovered that I'm actually way more polite on LinkedIn than I am in real life. And it's because that newspaper has got a voice. So I suppose that's something that I would suggest people work towards. The other thing about a newspaper, though, is it has to have an audience. So if you could be producing a great newspaper, but if only your mum reads it, it's not going to be a success. So by building out this network, I have a large number of individuals who may want to interact with the newspaper. And there's a mistake I made in the early days where I was a bit arrogant. I thought I knew what my audience wanted to read. And instead, I posted, I posted an article um, over Easter. So I tried to post one thing a day. It takes me 10 minutes. And on the Saturday over the Easter weekend, I'd forgotten to make a post. And I thought, I was just sitting, listening to a football game on the radio, and I thought, oh, I'll do a post. So I have a, a library of potential articles. And I found this article about authenticity and leadership. It was in Forbes magazine about four years ago. So I, 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 I linked to that article. I published it on LinkedIn. 
I put a headline which is authenticity and leadership, and I tagged the chap that wrote the article. And I went off to get my tea. Um, the next morning, I came down to see that this article had gone viral on LinkedIn. And by gone viral, I mean I had 250 messages, 500 comments, and two and a and quarter of a million people had viewed the article. It's just mad. But it was just, and, and that led to numerous conversations and a couple of new business opportunities, and, and a great business opportunity for Scotland out of Salt Lake City in Utah. And it's so it's there's a thing about using products like LinkedIn, which is about consistency as well. So if I make the decision to post every day, that's what I'll do. And I guess in, in part of that as well as as you've already touched on is that kind of authenticity. So it's consistent, but you know you um, you don't post things because you think somebody that you want to influence will be interested, you post the things that genuinely interest you. Well, let's be honest so here, I, I did do that for a while. I, I, I tried to do that, but I discovered it's impossible because I'm not telepathic. So what I ended up doing was, there's a, um, a, um, I watched this Michael Caine film from the 70s, and Michael Caine and uh, Hodgkins were sitting at a bar in the 1970s, um, pint of beer, cigarette in the mouth, reading a newspaper. And Michael Caine reach, reaches over to his, the person sitting next to him and goes, see this article, that's of interest to you. And I suddenly realized that that's what LinkedIn is about. It's about sharing an article that I think you'll find interesting. So like, if I look at yourself, Ron, if I read something that said, um, uh, this chap's had a huge success at Disney, and he used to be, he graduated from Edinburgh Napier, then I'll probably drop you a note and say, I, I, normally what I would do is to drop you a note, but that's not possible because of the size of the community. So that's the kind of thing that I would post on LinkedIn, and then I would tag yourself or tag the university. That's great. We've, we've had another question, uh, a follow on about if you have any technique that you'd recommend for uh, people to become more confident in, in making those approaches on LinkedIn, that, you know, how you build up that uh, confidence in it? Well, that's a, that's a really, this sounds like a planned question, Ron. So six years ago, I took part in one of the first TEDx events in the UK, which was delivered by Edinburgh Napier. So we did it at Site Hill. And at that event, I talked about a technique called BRAVE. And in essence, it's about actually moving yourself out of your comfort zone you no, know, accepting your, your, your things might go, allow yourself to fail. So you, think, you step out your comfort zone and you go, this might not work, but I'm going to do it for half an hour. And that's what you do. And you just allow yourself to fail. So, you know, it's a bit like I, I could send you a connection request, Ron, and you could write back and go, I hate you, Russell. Don't ever do this again. And I go, that's fine. I'll just disconnect from you. You know, we can do that. It's okay. You know, if, if something makes us feel uncomfortable, then we'll live with that. But there's one other thing I would say about, particularly for younger people. If, if I'm 56, so if someone who is 18 writes to me, I'm going to go, that's pretty brave. I'm pretty impressed that someone at 18 had the nerve to write to me and ask me this question. I'll maybe try and help them. I'm also thinking, oh, I enjoyed being 18. I know what the challenges of life at 18 are like. I wish someone had been there to help me. I will help them. So that story comes from meeting a, an Edinburgh Napier student, Bruce Walker. And he reached out to me when he was 18. And we built a company called, well, it's now called FutureX, which was, he wrote to me and said, would I help him host a, a, an event in Edinburgh about entrepreneurship? We did that. And then we went on to repeat that in Abu Dhabi, San Francisco, New York, and around the world. And that was all because he had the bravery to reach out. Even though he knew I might have been cruel or unsympathetic or just ignored him. But because he did it, that's what made the difference. So if he hadn't reached out, I wouldn't have taken that particular course in my career. So you, you've talked about... Um 
using the, the content to find ways to engage with, with the audience, particularly on LinkedIn. Um, but how else could you recommend for somebody to, to grow their network if, if, they're, if, if they don't know that many people yet, if they haven't got that many business connections? How would they begin to expand that network? Offer to help someone. So if you were to write to me and say, Russell, um, saw your talk, we'd, we'd love to contribute some time to help you. Then I will say, yes, let's do something together. We've then got a project. The project gives us an ask at the front end, at the pointy end of the project, there's an ask. And that ask allows you to grow your network. Because suddenly you're going, oh, I'm helping Russell put on this event in hospitality. So we're going to reach out to the heads of all the largest hotel chains in the world. And some of those people will become part of your network. And we're off and we're running then. But we've got to have the ask because it's not enough to say, I'm here to build my network. Or people send me LinkedIn requests going, Russell, I'd like to add you to my network. And I'm left going, why? Well, <laughs> how is that going to help us? But having that specific ask. And if you don't have an ask yourself, then get involved with someone else. So it was a young chap, uh, Sebastian in Edinburgh, um, offered to help with um, Scottish International Week. So he ended up hosting a couple of our events, and he's now become active in that community and is growing his network there because he's got an ask, which is to get more people to um, take part in his podcast. Fantastic. And um, the uh, I think you, you've mentioned uh, Andy Foots. Uh, yep. In, in passing earlier on, who uh, was involved with the Scottish Business Network, but um, he, I know, has uh, talked about hashtags and, and using them to uh, expand on your your reach with anything that you post. Can you maybe give us a, a little uh, expansion on that? So, so this is quite interesting because we all use technology in a different way. So, the way that I use the television is going to be different from the way you use the television. The way that I use my laptop is going to be different from the way you use your laptop. And that's the same when it comes to things like LinkedIn, is that everyone uses it differently. So for a lot of people, what they do is they maybe follow a company. So if that company, a company could be like Edinburgh and Napier. So if Edinburgh, you follow Edinburgh and Napier, and when Edinburgh and Napier pushes out information, you see it. Or you might follow a person. So you might follow Ron Aitken, and whenever he pushes out information, you see that. Some people follow hashtags. So LinkedIn, like most platforms, has got a hashtag capability. So you can follow a particular hashtag. So when you're posting a story, you can use hashtags that are kind of related to that story. And then if people are following that hashtag, they're more likely to see it. So one could be like there's a hashtag for global trade that's followed by 400,000 people. So I have a real interest in global trade. So that makes sense, sense that when I post an article, I'll hashtag that particular um, hashtag on it. And Andy Foote will include Andy's um, details in this. And Andy um, has a great manual on what all the hashtags are within LinkedIn and how you can use them differently. But it's, it's, it's getting away from assuming that everyone uses these platforms in the same way. Every, you know, not everyone reads the newspaper in the same way. So someone might read the newspaper starting with the front cover. Someone might read the newspaper starting with the sports pages. It depends. So everyone's doing it differently. Some people might just read the headlines. Some people might go to the horoscope. I'm presuming newspapers still exist. So, um, so we've got that. You talked as well, obviously, about um, you know the tone, the the, the voice uh, that you use, and, and not being uh, not following in immediately uh, with with something that we want to sell you. Um, but how we can help you. Um, I wonder if, if there's any uh, case study that you can really, in, in that sense, where, um, you know, particularly, I guess, a lot of people at the moment are using LinkedIn because they're looking for a new, uh, a new job, a, a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, you've already mentioned if, if the chief exec gets the phone call or the note saying, could I, I come and work for your company, then they're not likely to do much about it. But within LinkedIn, uh, how you would uh, approach posts so that that's um, 
not coming across as a as like a, a cry for help, but more of a positive. Yeah. Um, so it's important to realise that all human beings are equal. So we, we have a society in the UK where we tend to judge people by their job title. So if someone's job title is um, storeman, we have one relationship with them. If their job title is chairman of Shell, we react to them differently. So everyone's actually the same. But so, so you have to try and fight that that desire you have to react to people in a different way, depending on the job title. And then it's to make sure that your contact is, is in some way to help them. So it, 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 if it's, an example could be, if you were to write to me and suggest that you might, so rather than writing to me and saying, hey, Russell, would you hire me? If you wrote to me and said, hey, Russell, saw Scottish International Week and thought that was great. I'm looking to gain some experience delivering online events. Could I work with you on the next project? I'm going to say yes. That's really easy. You're then in. You've got that opportunity. And then one of our team, uh, Kendra Byers, who's also a graduate from Edinburgh and Napier, that's exactly what she did. She took part in a, um, an undergraduate course with me where the team volunteered their time to work on a project for me. And then that allowed her to build up a relationship with me as part of her network. And when she graduated, she came back and said, you know, was there an opportunity to work together? And we identified a project. So the one about tone is about be, not, not being pleading. But I, I think it's quite important and it's really difficult if you're looking for a job. If you're looking for a job and you've faced rejection a number of times, it's really difficult to, to, to think the fact you've got to not come across as pleading. If you can make it relevant, so if you said, um, Russell, I see you've got an event coming up in two weeks' time to do with um, St. Andrew's Day in Washington. I actually went to St. Andrew's University. Do you think I could maybe contribute to that? There's a hook there. So you've kind of, you go, all right, I'm, I'm interested in St. Andrew's. You've got something to do with St. Andrew's. That worked. That's a hook. But the single most important thing is um, we just saw the, the death of Sean Connery this week. And um, I, I've been watching a lot of um, pieces on YouTube where it was American actors, and they were talking about how to be confident, how to overcome challenges, how to deal with failure, how to get a positive mindset, and they're incredibly motivating people. And someone had once asked Sean Connery this question. He said, how, how, how do you drive change? How do you motivate? What would you say to a young person who's trying to make a difference and get on with it? What would be your words of advice? And he, he gave a very typical Sean Connery answer, which was he said, get off your arse. And, and that, that kind of do something is actually so important today. So it's not to overthink something. It's not to worry too much about what will happen. It's about to press go. And there's a great way to think about it because I have this problem. I'm not perfect. I have a problem whereby I procrastinate about doing something. And it's to do with newsletters. So we we'll produce a newsletter and then you put it into MailChimp. And when you're sending something on MailChimp, there's a big gorilla finger that comes down that presses send. It's kind of an animation they've got. I can't press that finger. Because I'm worried that, oh, maybe I've made a spelling mistake, or maybe I've forgotten to send it to the wrong person. Maybe I've done that. So, so I have this inherent issue from childhood that blocks me from sending that. It's daft, right? Absolutely daft. So I've overcome that because I get a member of my team to do send. And it sounds really simple, but it's because I've identified something that was stopping me from moving forward, and I've solved it. Now, it, it makes absolutely no difference in the bigger picture, but it just overcomes a challenge that I've identified. And it's another thing that's really important about authenticity, which is critical today, which is to understand who you really are. So that, that definition of who you are and understanding it and really analysing it is critically important. So I have to be really clear on who I am and what I'm passionate about. I love international travel. I adore being on a stage trying to help people. I love that attention. I get a really positive feedback from it. And I'm good at networking and making connections. So 
Scottish business networks likely to be a success then, because that's the criteria for making that work. So understand yourself as much as possible. Brilliant. Um, we've got a question about groups, uh, and obviously a, a, a good way to potentially grow your network and connections. Of groups depend on you currently having the role that's relevant to the group. If if you're a a recent graduate and you're starting out, have you got any tips for how you could, um, rather than just clicking join the group, how you can make yourself more um, appealing to be accepted within the group? It's all about offering to help. So imagine, imagine you and I are running a group and we've got 10,000 members and like people are sending messages and we're responding to them. It's a bit of hard work. Imagine if a recent graduate from Edinburgh and Napier was to drop us a note and say, hi, I'd love some experience helping you run your group. We would say yes. <laughs> we would say yes tripping over. And it's that. So if you're able to offer to help, you're able in some way to contribute, then that works. You know, I did this with a recent, I was doing a charity appeal in India. And um, I, 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 an individual contacted me and I disregarded him the first time because the approach was, I didn't feel comfortable with it. But he then approached again and he said, I see you're doing an, a running event, Russell, to support a um, organization in India. I'm a little bit of an amateur runner. Could I run with you? And I went, that's brilliant. I've got no idea that I will do that. But we got a call going and we discovered we had a tremendous amount in common. And he was, he's a brilliant guy. So we did this event together. He ran 10K in Delhi, dropped me a message, and then I picked up the virtual baton and I ran 10K in Lothgo. It's just amazing we did that. And it's all because he, he reached out and in a way I made an offer that I was intrigued about. And actually, we've subsequently gone on to developing a, a really deep business relationship. And he, that gentleman's about to be appointed as the SBN ambassador to India. Because he's just been great in the way he's been able to help people. And that's that again is a great example of how networks work. Unless you take action, you won't get anywhere. Fantastic. Um, the uh, opportunities with uh, with LinkedIn as well. If you're a, a, a business um, and you've got a business page which has been uh, redundant. Somebody saying, you know, it's it's not been updated for a while. How would you recommend that they use the business page as opposed to their, their personal account? Um, I suppose it's it's like anything. You have someone who's managing that page, who's sharing information that may be relevant. But but there's something about all these systems. The rules for using them aren't written down in stone. You can interpret them in any way. So when I think about my own personal LinkedIn page, I change the pictures and I change my job title every couple of weeks because someone says I can't. It kind of makes sense as people say, Russell, you're not this, you're that. Well, oh, that's interesting. I'll call myself that and see what happens. And it's the same with the company page. So all the company pages, there's enough. The company page is good because you can tend to have quite a lot of people following it. So if I think about the Edinburgh Napier University company page, that's a great way to share information about the university. But again, you've just got to decide what you want to share. Now, if you think about it, if all you share from your company page is about stuff that's internal to the company, you know, like Janice has been promoted or Steve's now this, no one's going to read that because it's not interesting. So just make sure you're pushing out content that's going to be interesting to the readers of the company page. So groups, companies, individual pages are like this. But it's not just LinkedIn, of course. You know, there are lots of other networks as well that you can you can get involved with and use. So we, we're doing tests with um, uh, Slack at the present moment as a way to build a network. We've we've used a, um, a Glasgow. <laughs> it's quite interesting running Scottish business network because you tend to try to work with Scottish companies. So Scottish International Week we delivered with Hay Summit and our platform for Scottish business network is. Um, it comes from a Glasgow company, so called Very Connect. So Very Connect provides us with our own internal network to allow people to connect. And and I think the one thing I think is really important is 
you've got to understand why you're doing it. It, it does just connecting for the sake of it makes no sense. There has to be some reason you're reaching out to these individuals and make that very clear. So someone said that um, I, I did a piece with a chap who was a drilling engineering supervisor out of Houston, and he was he was struggling to um, make connections with other drilling supervisors in the state. And we were speaking and I said, you, you're Welsh, aren't you? And he goes, yeah, 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 I'm Welsh. And go, well, you can actually go into LinkedIn and type in, you know, drilling supervisor. And you can do a search on university to see who studied at Cardiff University. And we came up with 54 people. I go, well, those 54 people are probably going to be quite interested in the fact you're Welsh. So he goes, oh, great, I'll write to them, I'll tell them the Welsh. He goes, no, 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 hang on. Let's change your picture to a huge big Welsh flag. I'm going, Wales does have a flag, doesn't it? He goes, yeah, yeah, it's got a flag. Shut up. So, so we, we changed that and we put a big, a, a big dragon on his profile and he reached out to people. And he, come, he called me up and said, you're not going to believe this, Russell, I've just closed the deal because I was able to get through all of the roadblocks to get to the person I wanted to speak to because they were just so taken by the fact that someone identified they were Welsh. So it's, it's those little things where you've just got to be thinking a little bit about what, how is the other person going to react to you. Fantastic. Um, we've had a question as well with the, uh, when you're sharing, saying resharing and you, you talked about the post that you reshared with uh, Forbes magazine, is there any mm -hmm. copyright issues that you have to take into account? Um, well, I, I, I'm sharing the actual article, so I'm not reinterpreting it so it doesn't breach copyright. And I also tag the author and the magazine in the share. So I, I've done everything. What's it? It's quite an interesting one. Actually, I, I shared another Forbes article a couple of weeks later and I tagged the author. And he sent me a message and saying, thank you for doing that. We should have a chat. I'm thinking about maybe coming to Edinburgh in the summer. So we, we arranged a call together. You know, so all I'd done was to share an article that he wrote. I didn't know him. I tagged him, we connected, and then we had a conversation. And during the conversation, he said, um, Russell, you seem to have a lot to say about things. So he, he saw me really quickly. And he said, um, why don't we do an article for Forbes? So, we, so he interviewed me. And a few weeks later, I find myself sharing my own Forbes article because he'd interviewed for me and it got published. And, and it's, this is why, you know, that advice from Sean Connery to just do something is so important, particularly at this time, particularly at this time where people are feeling isolated, because to do something can get more people talking to you and get more action. And um, that do something, as you were saying, you it took you some time to find your voice. So I guess the, the key thing, a key takeaway for people today is to, to start, to, you know, to try different things, to see what gets, a response for them and then to accept it will take a bit of time to find that voice and to, to, to develop a more consistent tone. Would that be a fair? I, I, absolutely. And I think it's about being brave. So just decide for 10 minutes just to be just to know no fear, try and do something and see what happens. And, and if you don't overthink it, you know, trust me, no one is going to get upset if you send them a connection request. The worst thing that can happen is someone's going to ignore it, or they're going to go, ah, oh, Russell, I don't like tall people. You know, it's, it's completely meaningless what anyone's going to do. So at least it gets you started. But you've got to have an ask. There's got to be a reason for doing it. So wait until you get to that stage where you're going, I'm looking for a career change, or I'm, I'm interested in this subject, or I'm doing some research. There's some reason for it, and then reach out. And the easiest way to do it is to offer to help. So you reached out to me and said, would I take part in this discussion? And I said, I said, yes, of course I will. And I shared this with my network, some of whom might be on the call. And when, you, when, we, when the video is published, I'll then share that with my network. And what it's done is it's linked my personal brand with a much more successful brand than, I, than me, which is Edinburgh and Napier University. And people I know who studied at Edinburgh and Napier University in the last 50 years will be quite keen to understand how does this work. That was really interesting. Are Edinburgh and Napier interested in other people doing this? And then the network grows and things happen. But there's got to be a specific 
laser focused arms. Fantastic. Um, I think Russell uh, is over the last hour. Uh, how to make those connections meaningful for what we uh, set out to do at the start. And for me, I think there's the three takeaways is um, you know, to, to have that clear objective, to be authentic to yourself and to offer to help others. Would, would that be a fair yep. summation or, and, and have any kind of final thought that you'd like to leave everybody with about how to make those connections meaningful? I, I, I think how to make the connections meaningful. Um, it's about nurturing them. So at the present moment, I think I may have said this, I'm, I'm sending 20 messages a day to first connections I haven't spoken with in a year. Because in the UK, we go back into a lockdown or partial lockdown or something. So people will be feeling a little bit bruised. So this is a good, great time to reach out to people and see if you can help. Um, and get involved. You know, you don't have to be isolated on your own doing this. Get involved in a community. You never know, you never know what will happen. But I tell you, nothing will happen unless you take that first step. That's fantastic, Russell. Thank you. And uh, we're getting posts here to, to comment on how useful and interesting people have found it. So oh, if I can finish by uh, thanking you for your time today and thanking our audience for their questions and uh, to wish you and, and Scottish Business Network every success going forward. Thank you so much, sir. Take care, Ron. Bye, Thanks everyone. Thanks very much now. Bye.